Praise Jesus, that child of God. Shalom, shalom. Praise the Lord. My name is Charlie G. This is Lesser Today. Thank you very much uh, for tuning in for Slicer Today. I know and I do believe that you are going to be blessed by our Slicer Today. Uh, it's a beautiful and a wonderful Friday that the Lord has given to each and every one of us. In the word of the Lord, say that this is the day the Lord has made so that we shall rejoice and be glad in it. There's never even a single day of the devil in that this is the day the Lord has made, in that God has made this day for you, in that each and every one of us being able to see this day is because the Lord has made this day for us so that we can rejoice and be glad in it. And so it's a thing for each and every one of us to make the best out of this day in the word of the Lord. We are always reminded that we should not worry about tomorrow and to let tomorrow worry about itself in that in today's it's its, it's own sufficiency. And so that's the same way like the Lord used to uh, provide daily manna for the children of Israel. Like, and that manna, manna means what's this? Manna means what's this? In that one day they were eating the manna, it tastes something that they desire. The next day they say that it's manna, it tastes what they desire. And so... That's the meaning of manna in that was this. And the same God who sustained them by daily giving unto them manna, in that he gave them manna for six days, and or for six days, on the sixth day, they were to, to collect twice as much, uh, because on the Sabbath day, none of them was, uh, one, none of them was, uh, was uh, expected, none of them was, uh, none of them was supposed to go uh, looking for manna on the seventh day uh, because it was a day of rest, it was a day for them to like enjoy that which they had in the previous day and in, in the word of the Lord we see that uh, those of whom collected enough in that those of whom collected enough in that they were satisfied but those of whom collected excess in that they lacked in that they felt hungry later on and so that's a thing for each and every one of us in that to live a life of always being humble in the word of the Lord we are always reminded that, humble, let, that we should humble ourselves under God's mighty hand and he shall and he shall lift us up at his own appointed time. And so it's a thing for each and every one of us to trust God. And that trust God in that which he gives you today. Trust him. And he was faithful with the little. The Lord will grant to him more. And so it's a thing for each and every one of us to live a life of always being faithful without the least the Lord. And trust it unto us. And so manna means was this and so god daily provided for their manner and this is the day the lord has made i know that you believe god has something so for you today is a blessing with your name on it so what are you gonna do in that it's, 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 in that for each and every one of us you're supposed to like put some praise in it and god in that he provided for the children of israelite in the in the wilderness the children of israelite in that they were in that god is so good and that he provided for them in the wilderness in that they're not going to like harvest from a from a farm they're not going to uh, they don't even travel from a farm. They are not going like to uh, eat fruits from a tree. In that God provided for them. God set a table for them in the wilderness. And so the same God who was able to provide for, uh, to set for them a table in the wilderness is also a God who is able to do it for each and every one of us. And God who did, did not withhold from me and uh, from us His one and only Son. Uh, what can He keep away from us? What can He keep away from us? In the word of the Lord, he said that God will never, uh, God will not, will never withhold anything good from those of whom walk upright. Walking upright is walking a life in righteousness, walking a life in fear of the Lord. In that, that's a way for each other of us to live a life in walking in uprightness. God provided for them daily manna. God provided for them daily manna. And says, my prayer, my heart is that whatever your heart desires is whatever you desire the Lord to give unto you. In that, may the Lord provide for you. And our sharing this lesson today, our WhatsApp group. In that, there's a place, uh, there's a, uh, there's a place that we should be. There's a posture we should have. There's a place we should be, there's a posture we should have, and there's a positioning, a place, posture, positioning, in that who shall ascend unto the mountain of the Lord, and those of whom are having a, clean, a pure heart and clean hands, they are the ones who shall ascend unto, unto the mountain of the Lord, and so that's a life for each and every one of us, you see as in that's a place, that's a place that when you get there, when you get there, in that you shall make your request known unto the Lord, and the Lord shall grant it unto you, and the Lord shall grant it unto you, our Lord Jesus Christ I was one day speaking to a group of people telling them that if your earthly father can give unto you that which you uh, that which you ask of them what about your heavenly father what about your heavenly father when you ask when you ask and so it's a thing for each other of us to live a life of all this father means source father means source abba means source and that god is our source god is our source of everything good and so it's for each other of us to live knowing that since you're a child of god since you're a daughter of god always make your request known unto them in the in the word of the love you are reminded that let us not worry about anything but in play but in prayer and supplication with us giving let us make our request known unto the lord let us let us make a request known unto the Lord in that with joy he draw for the west of salvation in that the enemy may want us to worry the enemy may want us to be grieved the enemy may want us to be in bitterness the enemy may want us to be uh, to be sad but God God wants us to rejoice this is a day that the Lord has made so we shall rejoice and be glad in it and so this is a new day and so it's, it's my prayer my heart is that, that his joy is going to locate you wherever you are in that you shall stop looking gloomy in that smile Jesus loves you smile just loves you that's uh, 
that 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 label that has been there since when I was a, a, a little child. Those tapes in that they used to be um, they, they used to be written. Jesus smiled, just loves you, and so uh, uh, and so I, I remind you of it. In that smile, just loved you. In that work, I separate from the love of God, life, death, principalities, calamities, drought, famine. There's nothing I can ever separate from the love of God. In that He loves His love for each and every one of us is too much. A love that overwhelms us. A love that drives us crazy. Let us pray. Our mighty and heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm grateful for yet another opportunity and a privilege. I give it unto me to share your word. And dearly, Father, this wonderful Friday that you're given to each and every one of us, O oh God, being the 20th day of the month of November, O oh God, your God has been with us throughout the whole of this year, O oh God. Your God has kept us alive, O oh God. Your God has sustained us, O oh God. And dearly, Father, for each and every one of us, O oh God, and knowing that you believe, O oh God, that we're going to finish this this year strongly in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, O oh God. And dearly, Father, knowing that you believe that each and every one of us is going to have a testimony, O oh God. Each and every one of us is going to have a word, oh God, each and every one of us, oh God, is going to have something to remember, oh God, 2020, or something good to remember 2020 with, oh God, for the glory and honor of your name, oh God, for those of whom are in despair, oh God, for those of whom, oh God, for those of whom are in distress, oh God, dearly, Father, how I speak your joy upon them, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, oh God, for your word is spirit and life, oh God, your word is spirit and life, your word is life to bring us, uh, to bring that thing back to life, oh God, and your word is spirit, oh God, to sustain each and every one of us, oh God, and dearly, Father, in this, our Father is glory, Father, we be a much fruit, oh God, and dear Father, I pray for each and every one of us that we shall live a life of bearing much fruit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, O oh God. And dearly Father, as I'm going to share your word, O oh God, grant unto me others from above, O oh God. And these are for faith that I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah, and so uh, today is all about see the light, hear the message, see the light, hear the message. Uh, in the, in the, we, we all know that the, our Father is the Father of light, our Father is the Father of light. And this wonderful weekend on Sunday, I was in a fellowship of brethren. Yeah, recon uh, reconciliation center in that uh, we were having our we were having our three days um, meetings in the CBD by Pastor Josiah and so there was a, a guest a guest who was there and then he was saying that in the word of the Lord we are told that uh, God is covered with an approachable light God is covered with an approachable light and each and every one of us we are children of the light each and every one of us we are children of the light the beautiful thing about light is that light will always like draw to light Light will always throw to light, and so our Father, being the Father of all light, our Father, being the Father of all life, are covered with an approachable light. In that each and every one of us are sons and daughters of the light, and that we are able to come into His presence, we are able to draw near to Him. And the word of the Lord in the book of James says that draw near to me, and I shall also draw near to you. And so, that thing for each and every one of us to know that light and light, in that we can always interact, we can always, um, uh, we can always draw uh, closer to, uh, to our Father. And so, it's not, it's not for, for us as believers, as Christians, to live a life of being away uh, from our father in that we are not darkness in the book of john he said that once light appears in this place of the darkness away and darkness comprehends it not in that for for us we are children of the light we are children of the light to approach our father of, of the light we are children of the light to approach our father of the light and so in and so in the book of genesis in the book of genesis when god said let there be light in that god is light god is light and then he spoke in that see the light here the message see the light here the message and i'm gonna point for i'm gonna i'm gonna I point to each and every one of us instances where the light shone and then uh, and then uh, uh, and then uh, someone spoke and then I've already shared I've already shared from the story of Peter I've already shared from the story of Paul and Silas in that there was light there was light that shone in the cell of Peter there was light that shone in the cell of Peter and then the angel of the Lord shot him and then he told him to uh, to hurry up to haste and 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 to uh, to put on his belt to wear his sandal and that's the thing in that once light appeared and also and, and also Paul when Paul encountered our Lord Jesus Christ when Paul encountered our Lord Jesus Christ in that a, a bright light shone from the heaven a bright light shone from the heaven and then our Lord asked Paul 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 Saul Saul why are you persecuting me in that he don't say the church he said me because the church is the body of Christ the church is the body of Christ and so I think for each and every one of us to live a life in respect to live a life in honor of the house of the Lord the presence of the Lord and then Apostle Apostle Grace Lubega was saying of, of was sharing the on the that they were sharing on that day of how us having the presence of the Lord in uh, us having the presence of the Lord in us in that it's it's a privilege it's a privilege it's a privilege for each and every one of us to have the presence of the Lord in dwelling in us because we all know that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit our power is to a child telling them that don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit in that believers can live a life of, of forgetting that believers can live a life of not understanding that their body are the temple of the Holy Spirit and so it's for each and every one of us to live a life of knowing that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit and so let us live a life and let us live a life of knowing that we are carrying the presence of the Lord. We are carrying the presence of the Lord. And so our Lord Jesus Christ appeared to Paul and, and, and then asked Paul, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? 
and that and that we're gonna read of, of, of it in the book of in the book of Acts chapter nine. The book of Acts chapter nine. See that. Meanwhile, Saul was still uh, breathing. Um, uh, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the lost disciple. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogue in Damascus, so that if he would, uh, he be found any. Let me just uh, jump off because I'm very sure I've read about it. And in verse four, he said that uh, verse three. Uh, as he entered Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven. And so see the light here, the message. See the light here, the message. And says, I think for about, about each and every one of us, in the blessed are the ears that hear. Blessed are the ears that hear. And then who are you, who are we listening to? Who are we hearing? In that, I've already said that we are children of the light. We are children of the light. And so as being children of the light, in that is usually a message that proceeds out from our mouth. In, that, in the word of the Lord, we have said that we are the light of the world. And we are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. The light of the world, the salt of the earth. And so being the light of the world, in that we should be avoided in that John the Baptist was in the wilderness John the Baptist was in the wilderness and then people went to him asking him are you the Messiah he said no are, are you Elijah he said no and then he was asked who are you and then he said that I'm only a voice in the wilderness preparing a way for the Lord I'm only a voice in the wilderness preparing a way for the Lord and one time our Lord Jesus Christ was speaking about John the Baptist and then he was telling the, the Pharisees he was telling the Pharisees you are you are able to uh, you are you are able to enjoy his burning and you are able to enjoy his burning and shining light. You are able to enjoy his burning and shining light for only a little while, for only a little while. And so you are seeing here our Lord Jesus Christ talking about John the Baptist, John the Baptist being a burning and shining light, being a burning and shining light. And then John the Baptist, when he was asked, ah, Who are you? He said that I'm only a voice in the wilderness preparing a way for the Lord. He was a voice. He was a voice. He was alive. And so you are seeing, seeing the light here, the voice, seeing the light here, the message. And I think for each and every one of us in that, let us always live before living a life of, of shining our life. Once we shine our life, in the people will only be found receiving our message. People will only be found receiving our message, hearing that which we are, we are having for them, hearing that which we are having for them. And so, and so, uh, as he entered Damascus on the journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I've already uh, told each and one of us that our bodies, um, I've already told each and one of us that the church is the body of Christ, the church is the body of Christ. And so each and every time that we go to church in that we are the body of Christ, we are in the body of Christ, we are the body of Christ, and we are in the body of Christ. And that is the same way like my, um, like our bodies, in that we are having hands, we are having legs, we are having our stomach, we are having our chest, in that uh, the body surely have different parts, the body surely having different parts. And so as being the body of Christ, as being the body of Christ, in that you and I represent different parts of the body, you and I represent different parts of the body in that, and, and we ought not to live a life of dismissing other people in that in that the eye cannot say to the hands I can I can do without you the eyes cannot say to the hands I can do without you the eyes cannot say to the mouth I can do without you in that the eyes is in need of the mouth the eyes is in need of the hand and that's why each and every one of us we ought to live a life of always knowing and understand that we all need each other we all need each other one person is the hands the other person is the leg that person is the eye in that that person is the eye to see that person is the leg for us to walk the other person is the hands for us to reach out and so it's for each and every one of us to live a life of, of of like appreciate who you are appreciate the role that you play in the body of crime and don't neglect don't neglect your part don't neglect your role and then live a life of always fulfilling that which you're supposed to be doing and that's why each and every one of us plugging into a church is very important and not only plugging into a church but also you asking yourself a question in that what should i be doing in this church what should i be doing in this fellowship what should i be doing i'm, I'm minister this brethren in that who am i which role should i be found playing which part should I be found, be found playing and that don't just be found going to church and then leaving when the service is over and that is a part for each and every one of us and that's why you are in that church and that's why you are in that church yeah uh he fell to the ground and had a voice say to him Saul Saul why are you persecuting me who are you lost so acts I am Jesus whom you are persecuting I am just whom you are persecuting and you see as in for each and every one of us as believers as Christian he who receives you receive Christ and he received Christ, received the one who sent him, our, our Father who is in heaven, our Father who is in heaven. And so whenever people are not welcoming you, whenever people like reject you, whenever people like shut the door to you, in that in that they are failing to receive our Lord Jesus Christ, in that your Lord Jesus Christ is telling Saul, I am Jesus, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, I am Jesus whom, whom you are persecuting. And so it's usually a privilege when people, when people are hearing you, sharing you, are hearing you share the word of the Lord, it's usually a privilege for them 
not for you. It's usually a privilege for them to hear you because you are a servant of the Lord, because you are a servant of the Lord. In the order of the Lord, we are told, how can they call upon whom they are not believing? And how can they believe and, uh, and how can they believe unless someone goes to preach to them? And how can anyone preach unless someone is sent? And how beautiful the feet of those of whom have, have, have sent to have to preach have, have to preach the gospel in that they cannot call upon whom they have not believed in. And they cannot believe unless someone goes and preach to them. And so for each and every one of us in that we surely having a noble task, we surely having a noble task of preaching Christ or presenting him to people, preaching Christ, presenting him to people so that they can be found calling upon the name of the Lord, so that they can be found calling upon the name of the Lord. You see, unless we tell them of Jehovah Rapha, unless we tell them about Jehovah Nisi, unless we tell them about Jehovah Jireh, in that they cannot call upon him, they cannot call upon him. And so it's, and, and so instead of instead of us living a life of of of, of maybe sometimes you usually wondering why is someone in pain, why is someone in bitterness, why is someone living in frustration, in that they cannot call upon whom they have not believed in, and 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 they have not yet believed in the God who saved, they not believe in the God who is able to restore, they not believe in the God who is able to heal the broken hearted, and and, it's, it's, and 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 that's usually the part for each of us to play, uh, for each of us to play, in that make them call upon whom is able to save them. Now the Lord said that the Lord is near to those of whom call upon him. The word of the Lord is near to those of whom call upon him. And in the word of the Lord, we all know about the angels. The angels are surely um, in that the angels, the angels of light, the angels of light who appear to the people. And so uh, and so we are approaching, we are fast approaching Christmas and I'm um, trusting God that I'm going to decorate this place uh, with a Christmas tree and then having the ribbons here. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> I'm excited about December. I'm excited about December. I'm excited about uh, remembering the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so turn with me. And so, um, yeah, this is going to be our our verse for today. Uh, turn with me in, uh, to the book of... Uh, earlier on, I was, uh, when, uh, before you said the broadcast, I was like, we're going to be airing our broadcast at 3.13. We're going to be airing our broadcast at 3.13 uh, because our theme verse always comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 13. Our theme verse always comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 13. Uh, if you didn't know, now you know. And so in the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 13, it says that, uh, but encourage one another daily, but encourage one another daily. In that each and every one of us, we all told us we found have been encouraged daily, as long as it's today, as long as it's today. But we encourage each other daily, as long as it's called today, so that none of us will be hardened by the sin deceitfulness. Sin deceitfulness always results to people's heart being hardened, and that's why we're surely coming live on air each and every day. And my brother has been doing a sharing about the story of Jonah, and I know that you believe that you have been blessed that he is in, in his undisclosed location. Yes, he's not here. Yeah, I saw uh, but we settled for, for that team, settled for, for that team, and that, that consistency is very important, and I know and I do believe that you have been blessed. And so turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse, uh, when the angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds in the field. Uh, Luke, chapter 2, verse 8. And it says, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I, will, I bring to you good news. Do not be afraid. See the light here. They miss it. See the light here. They miss it. And so you are seeing when the angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds who are in the field at night, in that light show, the glory of the Lord shone. And for each and every one of us, we ought to know that we are covered with the glory of the Lord. We are covered with the glory of the Lord. In the book of First Corinthians, she talks about from glory to glory, from glory to glory. And so this glory is usually seen. This glory is usually seen by men. This glory is usually seen by men. And so let us not be found living a life of, of taking for granted the glory of the Lord. And never live a life of trading the glory of the Lord for something else. Don't trade the glory of the Lord for something else. But live a life of knowing that the glory of the Lord covers you. The glory of the Lord. And that God crowns us with glory and honor. God crowns us with glory and honor. And that's why we are able to render unto him glory. And that's why we are able to render unto him honor. You see, we can never give what we don't have. And since the Lord has crowned us with glory and honor, that's why we are surely able to render unto him glory and honor. Because we are having glory and honor. God said that he wants to share his glory with any God. We are the children in that we are the glory of God. God did not share his glory with any God. God did not share his praise with any idol. And so we are the praise and glory of God. Yeah. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. Uh, I should like doing their hands. 
and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring to you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. You see us in the good news that we hear in that it brings joy to us. In the book of John, our Lord Jesus Christ I told the disciples that this word I'm speaking to you so that your joy may be complete. This word I'm speaking to you so that your joy may be complete. And so there's usually something about us living a life of hearing the word of the Lord. In that, if, uh, as we continue on living a life of hearing the word of the Lord, there's that joy that comes, there's that joy that comes, and so that's and that's why for each and every one of us, in that we should never take it for granted hearing the message of the Lord, we should never take it for granted like studying the word of the Lord. In that, there's surely a transformation that comes to us, there's surely a joy that comes to us as we receive the word of the Lord, as we receive the word of the Lord, and that's why for each and every one of us, always receive the word of the Lord with expectation, always receive the word of the Lord with excitement, always receive the word of the Lord uh, with uh, with an open heart, with an open heart. And so in the book of John, in the book of John, it talks about, and this is what I spoke to you so that your joy may be complete. And then uh, I thank the Lord for. Whoa. Uh, in the book of. Joy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in the book of John, chapter 15, that you will speak, the book of John, chapter 15, verse 11. John 15, 11. John 15, 11, it says, in the book of John chapter 15 verse 11 it says I have told you this I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete I have told you these things uh, Jesus Christ uh, the context is described being the vine and we are the branches which are abide in him and him in us which shall bear much fruit because without him we can do nothing uh, in the book of John chapter 16 verse 11 say that I have told you these things so that my joy may be in you you see as in the word of the Lord in that the word of the Lord usually comes so as to secure the joy of the Lord in us the joy of the Lord that He shall provide for us. The joy of the Lord that He shall sustain us. The joy of the Lord that He shall open doors for us. The joy of the Lord that He shall grant unto us breakthrough. The joy of the Lord that He shall set before us an open door that no man can close. The joy of the Lord. And that usually comes to us as we receive the word of the Lord. I have told you these things so that my joy may be in, in you and that your joy may be complete. And so there's usually a completion of joy as we get to hear the word of the Lord. There's usually a completion of joy that comes to us. Uh, to each and every one of us as believers, as Christians, because of listening to the word of the Lord, because of listening to the word of the Lord. This thing I spoke to you that my joy may remain in you, in that your joy remaining in us, in that, the, that in that the enemy not come and take away the joy of the Lord from us. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today, today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And so it's all about, for each and every one of us, living a life from seeing the light here, the message, seeing the light here and the message. And so as my prayer, my heart is that, that our eyes are going to be open. In the book of Psalms, that all the Lord is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And so not only about us seeing the light, but it's also about each and every one of us hearing the message. My sheep knows my voice and they, and they follow me. My sheep hears my voice and they follow me and our Lord Jesus Christ we know that he is alive and since I think for each and every one of us not only seeing but also hearing not only seeing but also hearing you see the more we continue on hearing him the more his joy shall continue on remaining in us you see here in this world for each and every one of us to be able to overcome to be able to live a victorious life in that we need the joy of the Lord the joy of the Lord is ourself and those of who know their God they shall grow strong and they shall do exploit the joy of the Lord is myself and so it's a thing for each and every one of us living a life of seeing the light and hearing the message seeing the light and hearing the message and my friend my heart is that, that none of our eyes is going to be blind, that none of our ears is going to be deaf. Our Lord just can say that if only their eyes saw, if only their ears had, they could, and if only their hearts were it was able to understand, they could have turned to me and I could have healed them. And so it's, and, and so it's really a wonderful thing for our eyes to see and our ears to hear. Uh, and our ears to hear and our hearts to be able to understand so that we can turn to our Lord Jesus Christ and be healed. And so that's it for today. And I know that we that each and every one of us has been blessed by the Lord. Lord. And so let us uh, let us be here. We're going to be live on YouTube uh, this uh, weekend. And I trust the Lord. We're going to have awesome sessions. So tune in and uh, get ready for the posters. So shalom, shalom. Till next time, the Lord bless you. Thank you. Hi, I hope that you liked our slice of today, as long as it's today. 
according to the book of Hebrews chapter 3 verse 13. I welcome you to subscribe to our YouTube channel as like so today and also hit the notification bell. I'd also like you to like and follow our Facebook fan page as like so today. Here to follow us on Twitter as like so today. Here to follow us on, on Telegram as like so today. Here to follow us on Instagram as like underscore of today get to download slice of today application from play store the slice of today get to also join us on wordpress at the slice of the day blog the slice of the day blog and also if you like me to uh, to add it to my whatsapp slice of today group get to text me on 0708884323 and i know and i do believe with the various social media handle that you are having you're gonna be blessed by all the content by all the things that we get to share so be blessed as long as it's today we hear from the lord